If you have joined this church because you think you're going to marry me, this needs to be your last Sunday. Hey guys, welcome to Bring Your Babs Being Thin Now. I'm your host, Vale Chikuni. We begin Pastor Jonathan Miller. We have a pastor out of Indiana, South Bend, Indiana. And he has a message, okay? He has a message to all the sisters out there, especially the single ones. <laughs> hey, so let's listen in and then we'll dive into what uh, he is doing and saying. Here we go. Serious announcement. If you have joined this church because you think you're going to marry me, this needs to be your last Sunday. We don't do that here. I don't run through the women. We don't do that here. So I have to say this because unfortunately we've had several situations with several individuals who have made it clear to several of our leaders that they felt God led them here to be a spouse to me. I can tell you that is a lie. Second order of business, we had an individual call the church. I don't know this person. They said they were upset because they had been in a relationship with me for an extended period of time via email and I suddenly stopped reaching out to them. Well, that's because you were never talking to me in the first place. So to whoever that was, I'm sorry that you went through this tragic event, but that's not our fault. And I would pray that you would be less gullible in the days ahead. But I assure you that if you push this any further, we will legally take action with great prejudice. So go ahead and let it die. Repent and go find a real human. So we're not gonna do none of this foolishness because you was talking to a fake page thinking it's me so let me set order if you came to this church and you think I'm your husband unthink it so let's calm that down look at your neighbor and say calm all that down calm all we don't do that foolishness here you should be glad you got a pastor with some integrity we don't do that stuff here all right there you have it <laughs> we got a pastor who is full of integrity okay this is uh uh this is what he had to say okay so this is pastor jonathan mira okay and he decided to set the record straight to his congregation but there is a backstory to all of this okay so why are women coming uh to his church thinking that they'll be able to score you know <laughs> become the next first lady <laughs> okay who knows hey man <laughs> But anyway, um, we're going to, I'm going to play a video for you guys. So you're going to be able to hear what he's saying. Okay. So Jonathan Mira is a pastor who took over from his parents. Uh, his parents used to be the pastors and then now he's taken over since, uh, 20, since 2011. Okay. So, uh, we're going to play the video and then we're going to uh, interact with it. So I'm wondering. Did he become a pastor because, like, you know, just because your mom and dad, they are pastors, that doesn't mean the children are going to be pastors, okay? This is an office that, you know, you have to be called to be, an, uh, to be a pastor. It's not just because. So, we're going to listen in to, you know, the backstory, how he ended up saying what he's saying, okay? So, back on in, there is more we'll be able to get to, but we're going to uh, start right about here, okay? Here we go publicly divorced in this church. When I got divorced, people in the city turned on me that I didn't even know cared. Preachers and ministers and churches that used to invite me to preach still will not invite me to preach. There were words that had gotten out about me that were devastating to my soul. I felt pain in a way I had never felt before. I didn't cheat on my ex. I didn't beat on my ex. We had irreconcilable differences that could not be resolved because the fact of the matter is we were not on the same page. I got married and didn't understand what marriage was. Okay, so we have over here Pastor Miller. According to his own testimony here to the church, he got divorced. It was public divorce in the church. And what he's saying, uh, he got married because he, um, before he understood what marriage was. So my question is, why would you get married if you don't understand what marriage is? And how can you be a pastor without understanding what marriage is? is okay not only that he said the reason why they got divorced it was nothing to do with cheating it was nothing to do with abuse but it's because of uh irreconcilable differences okay this is how people get divorced in hollywood 
Okay? Not amongst Christians. So he got divorced while he was a pastor. This is, everything is coming out from his own mouth. So let's go to the scriptures, okay? And then we're going to see what the Bible teaches on this issue, okay? Because we, you know, it's all about the scriptures, okay? It's all about the scriptures. All right, so what do we have over here? Matthew 19, okay? I'm just going to read this because this is, uh, you know, the Pharisees came to Jesus asking, you know, asking him, like, okay, you know, should people be uh, divorcing and everything? Jesus made it clear, okay, investigate, you know. Uh, you know, what God has put together, let no man separate, okay? And the Pharisees ask, oh, how come people are divorcing Moses? Say, Moses gave you the certificate of divorce because of your hardness of heart. From the beginning, it was not so, okay? God hates divorce, full stop. But this is what Jesus says in verse, um, in verse 8, okay? He said to them, because of your hardness of heart, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. That's what the Bible teaches. Okay? Now, there are, you know, three uh, schools of thought. Okay? There's people who believe... Uh, no divorce under no circumstances are you to divorce okay I think Piper holds to that view and if you divorce you cannot marry they you know there's good sorry people hold to that view and there's people who believe like okay you know the scripture has an exception okay in cases of if somebody commits a adultery then you know you, you can marry things of that nature okay but we're going to stick to uh, Pastor Mira over here okay According to the scriptures, the reason why he got divorced does not match the scriptures. Because the scriptures giving exception in terms of sexual immorality, okay? And according to what he says, that's not what happened uh, between him and his wife. So why did he get divorced? Not only that, as a pastor, he is divorced and he's still, and he's still preaching? He's still holding a, an office of a pastor? On what basis, on what grounds? What happened to the scriptures? So we're going to listen uh, more to what he is telling us, okay? That way, I'm, I'm telling you, this is, uh, I'm sorry. Okay, we need to be reading our Bibles. It's not an easy job to be a pastor. That's why there's specific qualifications on why, on how somebody can be a pastor. It's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. Okay, so let's listen in to uh, Pastor Mira. Here we go. Which is what the greater majority of you don't know because we come to church and we shout and we jump, but we don't deal with the realities of how to live life. And I went through a divorce and when I went through that divorce, it was devastating. Wait for it. And because my heart is for the people of God, I kept preaching and teaching at such a high level, the church kept growing. And then a new group of people started to gravitate to my ministry and call me throughout the world to minister the gospel. During this time frame, I am literally losing my mind. Nobody knows it. So this, this is a problem, okay? Pastor Miller is an issue. Pastor Miller, he's a problem. He decided to take it upon himself that the church of God is, wasn't going to make it in Indiana. The church of God was going to die. The church was going to be destroyed. Why? Because he is not, uh, he's not able to mount the pulpit. Because he cannot preach. So this church is, go is, is just going to go to hell in a handbasket. No, absolutely not. You have to remember, who is in charge of the church? Jesus Christ is in charge of the church. The elders, these are under shepherds, okay? The gates of hell will not... Um, um, what does it say? I'm sorry, I'm even forgetting this, this scripture, right? Jesus Christ is in charge of his church and the gates of hell will not prevail upon his church with or without Miller, Pastor Miller and on any, any other pastor for that matter, the church is going to go forward. Okay. We tend to think that, oh, this thing is not going to happen. This thing is not going to work. This thing is going to die because you're not doing it. No, absolutely not. It is a privilege 
to save. It is a privilege for people to be able to be pastoring. So once you start thinking that, quote unquote, this ship is going to sink because you're not the one on the wheel, you're not the one doing it, then you, you are operating outside what God has prescribed as to, as, as to what pertains to the office of the pastor. And he says himself, okay, that uh, people didn't know what he was going through. Okay, he was going through a lot of things. Why didn't the people know what he was going through? How come the people in the church didn't know what, he, what the pastor is going through? This is the problem when people are so secretive even within the church. Okay, as a body, we're supposed to bear each other's burdens. We are supposed to pray for one another. We're supposed to look for one another. These are the things that are supposed to be happening in the context of a church. So if a pastor is not comfortable to share whatever this struggle that he's going through with, uh, with other elders within the church, then we, th that's an issue. That is a problem. That is an issue. That is a problem. It should not be so. That's why this, there is a qualification for somebody to be an elder. And then he went on to say that the church grew. So many people kept coming. Well, whether that church, uh, the, just because the church is growing, that doesn't mean that, quote unquote, and by the way, they are growing. It's the numbers of people, right? The more people you have in your church, that means the church is growing. Okay, fine. You can say the church is growing because people are coming. This, this is something that we can see, right? We can, uh, we can measure that. But is it a healthy church? Is it a church that's um, proclaiming the word of God, preaching the word of God? Because, I mean, how many mega churches do you know that are, are full to the capacity, but whatever else is happening over there is pretty much a synagogue of city? Okay? Mike Todd is a mega church, over 30,000 people. Joe Austin has a mega church, Stephen Fatig, you name it, Joyce Meyer, all these other people, right? TD Jakes. Okay, they have, I mean, three, four, five services that they're doing. But we know whatever is happening over there does not please God. Okay, so Pastor Mira over here, okay, by the way, he's, he's already a disqualified pastor, but he's still pastoring. So I'm sorry, what, however that church is growing, I have questions, absolutely questions. But there is more that he shared, and let's continue because I've been given a measure of strength and tolerance, wait for it, that is abnormal. Based on the fact that I have strong parents, I've been taught strong faith, so I'm functioning while I'm truly a dysfunctional person. And this is what I've discovered about people. People don't really care what you're going through as long as you can help them. This guy is just lying. They, those things are actually things that happened to him, right? He, he went through those things. I grant that. But... He thinks he's operating in the way that is pleasing to God, but he's not. Okay? He is going through difficulty time. He is suffering. Uh, he's not sharing with his church. And according to him, he's, he, he's successful, able to do those things because of his parents and because he, uh, he's been given these things abnormal. Where do we find that in the scriptures? Okay? This is an office. You're taking care of the sheep of Jesus Christ. So the strength that, you know, uh, God is going to give you strength for you to be able to do those things. If you are this much stress and then you're saying that you're doing these things for the sake of God, I'm sorry, you're definitely lying. Okay, you're definitely lying. Why? Because God is a God of order. The number one ministry is to your home, not your church. Any pastor who is neglecting his home at the expense of the church, he's operating outside the will of God. You should you should question that if anything if people are doing it like in most people they might be doing it thinking that they're doing uh the work of god they're doing good like no your priority is to your home after that then to church if the church affairs are interfering with what's happening in the church you need to drop the things that are happening in the church and focus to your family okay the first institution was the family not the church and the reason one of the qualifications of an elder guess what where do we check the qualifications? Is it a home? The home, his household must be in order. If the household is not in order, you're disqualified for an office of an elder. That's not me. That's what the scripture teaches. And most people think that, oh, this is just a one-time thing. No, no, no. This is not a one-time thing. As long as you're holding the office of an eldership, your household must be in order. The moment that your household is not in order, you are disqualified. You need to step down. You need to step down, sort those affairs. But most people think that this is just a one-time thing. No, it is not. It is absolutely not. So let's go to the scriptures over here, okay? And we're just going to let, uh, you know, the text, okay? We want, we want the scriptures, you know, 
uh, where are we? Right here. Okay. These are the qualifications. Okay. The uh, qualifications of um, an overseer. It's the same thing. Bishop, overseer, elder, pastor. This is the same. Uh, this is what it says. Okay. The saying is trustworthy. Okay. If anyone aspires to the office of an overseer, he desires a noble task. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach. Are you telling me a pastor who has been divorced? According to the reasons of divorce is irreconcilable differences, which you're not going to find in the scripture. Is he above reproach? The answer is no, he's not above reproach. If he's not above reproach, he's disqualified. He needs to step down. And I continue. Okay. And they are uh, sober-minded, above reproach, a husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a love of money. He must manage his own household well, with all dignity, keeping his children submissive. So, already, we have already established over here, Pastor Mira, with his own mouth, he's just disqualified himself, Okay. His household is not in order because, according to his own words, he divorced his wife because of irreconcilable differences. That's not a clause for divorce in the scriptures at all. Marriage is a covenant. Marriage is a permanent thing, okay, through, you know, uh, in sickness and in health, through thick and thin, okay, till you die. So, but he continued to tell us, okay. Uh, you know, we're going to play some more of, of his video, okay? But before I continue, okay, let's listen into what this preacher says, okay? And he, he just answered him that, no, 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 you're lying. But I like how, uh, I like how uh, this pastor puts it, okay? So we're going to let uh, the pastor give an answer. Here we go. Position of authority. And so men... This is very, very important, especially for men in the ministry. I have heard men say that they rightfully have neglected their family in some degree because of ministry. Do you know what those men are doing? They're accusing God. They're accusing God. You know what they're saying? They're violating Romans 12, 1 and 2 that says the will of God is what? Perfect. So if you tell me because of the ministry, I don't have time for my family, Look what you're saying. You're saying that the will of God is imperfect because in order to obey the will of God in the ministry, I have to violate the will of God with regard to my wife and my family. That's blaming God. That's nothing heroic or sacrificial. That's blaming God. And that's demonstrating that your real intention is not to be obedient. Your real intention is to create some sort of name for yourself, some sort of kingdom, or maybe God just needs your help. You see, we're only required to be obedient, okay? Now, some of you wives right now, you just want to put a proverbial elbow right into the ribs of your husband and say something like this, why can't you be like that man? Here's the answer I'm going to give you. Look at her and say, that man's not even like that man. But I do see this as a reality and I do repent when anything starts becoming like me and it, oh, it does. Whenever there are unmet expectations that cause me to be sad. But, but men, authority is authority to serve. You have been entrusted with God's daughter. You have been entrusted with children. Do you see? Okay, so uh, that's, you know, uh, Brother Paul Washer over there are like, yes. Because God is a God of order. So he's not going to allow you to compromise on one thing uh, at the expense of the other. God does not work like that. So if your home is suffering because you are, quote unquote, ministering, you need to check. You see what I'm saying? I know like our thinking just like, oh, I'm grinding for the king. Like, no, they are priorities. So have those things in order the way that is pleasing to God. So I thought like, OK, that was uh, that was, you know. That was good. But uh, Pastor Mila is not done. Okay, so let's listen more to what uh, he had to say about his situation. We continue. So I'm stressed out, but I'm still preaching. 
I'm telling people, now they know I just got divorced, but they need me to come to the hospital. They need me to lay hands. They need me to do this. They need me to do that. And that's fine. That's my responsibility. But where I messed up is this. I should have took a break. I should have stopped and said, hey, I'm going to leave for a year and I'm going to get my mind right. But see, when you do stuff like that, church is conditioned by religious people to judge you. We're supposed to be the place of mending and healing, but somewhere down the line, they started becoming the place of condemnation and judgment. So when pastors go through, they feel like they got to hide everything because if they don't, y'all going to fire them. Well, you know, some truth to what he's saying. Okay, like the church shouldn't be, uh, it should be a, a place where people can share their burdens. People bear each other's burdens, okay? We don't want the pastors to be hiding their things because they're afraid that they're going to be fired, right? And now, you know, he's saying like, okay, he, he was hiding because he was scared of being fired. So he feared more people than he feared the scriptures. He was more concerned of him being fired than being concerned of being uh, honoring the word of God. You see what I'm saying? And now because, you know, things have passed and everything else, now he's telling us a story. Of course, that's your responsibility. You are a pastor. That is your job. You're supposed to go uh, see the sick, do all those things. It comes with the job. It comes with the territory. So if people are not aware that you're going through difficult, you're going through suffering, what, what are they supposed to do? What are they supposed to do? Of course, they're going to call on you. But if they are aware, then they're going to do things accordingly. So my question is, where are the other elders at this particular church? Did the other elders know about the situation with Pastor Miller? And what did they do about it? Okay, because like, you know, at this point, everything, what he said, it happened publicly. Why didn't he step down? How come uh, the elders didn't tell him that to step down? This is also the problem when people don't know their scriptures. Okay, you have uh, the congregation that is ignorant as to what is the qualification of an elder and what is expected. And also, there is an expectation for members as well. Okay? It goes both ways. Even though the pastor is the pastor of the church, he is also a member of that church. So, he is, is, he is subject to everything that a member is also subject. Okay? So, a member can get uh, church discipline. A pastor can also get uh, a church discipline. This is what cleared. I don't think they practice church discipline at this church. Because if they did, no way they'll be having... Uh, a, a pastor who's divorced and is still a pastor. Okay? Because, and the reasons that he got divorced, you're not going to find them in the scriptures. So already he's disqualified by that virtue. Not only that, he already shared he got married. He didn't know why or, you know, what marriage is for. So you are out here. Uh, how are you doing marriage counseling if you don't understand what marriage is? How are you, if somebody comes to you, uh, if a couple in your church comes to you that they're going through divorce, right? What are you going to tell them? Oh, don't divorce? But you have been divorced. So how are you going to tell them not to divorce? And if they give you the reasons that, okay, you know, irreconcilable differences, how are you going to tell them that according to the scripture, this is not a reason for you guys to divorce. You need to fight for your marriage. How are you going to do that? How are you going to uh, officiate uh, weddings? So... By virtue of him being divorced and still holding to the office of a pastor, he has just undermined the word of God. These are the things we are to avoid the appearance of evil. Sometimes you might not even, you know, the qualification, if your household is not in order, like the, the pastor might be a dope pastor, okay, a good pastor and everything, but he has his children at home, but they are wildy. So because, the, you know, they are out of order, he is going to be disqualified by virtue of his children, even though he hasn't done anything. Because that's what the scripture commands. That's why this office of an elder is not for everybody. It's not for everybody. So even if somebody wants to be uh, an elder, right, you want your family to be on board. Because your family can get you disqualified. You see what I'm saying? So this is not like in an office that you can just do whatsoever. Like, no, that's not what happens. Okay. I'll share this with you. Uh, you know, like at my church. They, they do uh, every year, the pastors, the, the elders, it's an every year evaluation. So quite honest, you only have one year, 12 months that you can go, <laughs> you, can wow, you can be wild wow doing whatever else. After that, you will be discovered. Why? Because they do an evaluation to see if all those qualifications are up to date, to see if your household is in order to see if you're still above reproach. You see what I'm saying? So if those things are not, guess what? The, the, the most that you can go will be, will be 12 months. 
because they they interview they do all those things right to make sure that everything is okay because the scriptures even say like you know even the outsiders might think should think well of an overseer these are outside who are not part of the congregation should think well of you what more the people who are inside so this is just how difficult it is to be an elder so yes you need to be praying for your elders absolutely you need to be praying for elders so that's why, you know, an elder makes sure that the household is in order. They'll interview the wives to make sure, you know, uh, how is he treating you? Is he doing this, 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 as the things that the husband is supposed to be doing? Okay? If anything comes out of that issue, that's it. You, you, you know, you're going to step down. You'll be removed. So that's why they make sure these things. And this also provides a safety even for the, um, for the members, right? You know, like, okay, you know, uh, you know, these elders are in check. And that also puts you as members to be in check. Because it's not like the elders, whatever. Like, no, it's, it goes both ways. If the members, their household is in order, they're just all over the place. You know, it, it goes both ways. So it's a change where by the way, like, okay, if we were serious about this way, okay. <laughs> you got to make sure that everything is up and up. As it should be. As it should be. As it should be. Okay. And church discipline is there as well. Okay, as it should be. And remember, church discipline, it must be, you know, it's a church discipline. What is a church? The assembly, okay? The gathered, uh, the gathered body. So when these things are happening, they are happening in front of the church. So the rest may stand in fear. You cannot be doing this church discipline, back doors and everything like no. So, I, I mean, you know, it's, it's not easy to be, to hold this office. I know. So there's a book, actually. You know what I mean? What is a health member? What is a health church? Good information that's there, backed up by the scriptures. So anything that we've just heard over here from uh, Miller, mm -mm -mm. no, 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 not good at all, not good at all. But we continue. Here we go. Your medical doctor went through a divorce, and guess what he still did? Perform surgery on you. Your lawyer went through a divorce, and guess what happened? You still called him to handle your court case. Your pastor goes through a divorce, and all of a sudden he's not qualified to preach. He's supposed to be held at a higher, a higher esteem. In life, life can't happen to me. So then in American society, I became one of the first preachers to ever go public and discuss the, 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 the hurting things that happened in a divorce. So all of a sudden now, I'm getting calls from bishops and leaders who have mega churches staring me in the face and breaking down crying and saying, I don't know what to do, I want to leave my wife. Watch this. And because of the ministry God gave me, I was able to preach their families into restoration. Y'all clapping. But do you know what that did to me psychologically? How are you going to fix day marriage? At my expense, y'all don't want to talk, but this is how I'm talking to God. And now I'm over here by myself. My ex-wife has moved on. She got a man. They doing whatever. And I'm by myself. And I'm expected to preach the gospel. I'm expected to lay hands. I'm expected to speak in tongues, lay on the altar, and go home by myself with nobody to talk to, nobody to minister to me, and everybody talking about these single pastors out here. I didn't ask for this. No, you did ask for that. Okay? If you step down. That's all you have to do. Step down. That's, those are the things that you have to do. Now, according to what he shared, there were uh, other bishops who were about to leave their wives, right? They called him how they can do this whatsoever. He was able to, you know, to help them to restore their marriage and everything. All fine. We celebrate that. That their marriages were able to be restored and they didn't divorce. That's a good thing. So... But just because those things happen, that still doesn't mean that he should maintain to be a pastor. He's still disqualified. God can draw a straight line with a crooked stick. That doesn't mean we'll be going out here looking for crooked sticks. And just because those things happen, that doesn't mean that it's fine for him. Because the word of God is already clear. God has already spoken. We just go by the word of God. That's it. Those are the things that we should be doing. Not only that, he's saying that, uh, you know, a lot of people had, you know, walked away from him because of his situation. Like, yes, you know what I'm saying? I'm even wondering, like, okay, why were those people, I bet you those people were even calling you because they wanted to see like, oh, I seen that you're making it, right? You left, you know, you, you, you and your wife are divorced, but you're still doing it. How are you doing it? Okay, so at least he helped them to, quote unquote, restore their marriages. Good. I celebrate that. But it, it does not negate what the word of God teaches. He's still disqualified. He still needs to step down. He still needs to step down from a pastor. He can just be a church member who is attending and be faithful. Uh, and be faithful. You see what I'm saying? That doesn't mean if he's no longer a pastor that, you know, 
uh what like you know you 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 cannot faithfully save in that position biblically speaking even though he's still doing it he is still disqualified but you know people over there they are you know they are clapping they're celebrating and everything why they don't know their bibles okay we are responsible whenever whatever the pastor teaches us we have to check it if it doesn't match with the scripture we are under no obligation to hold to that to hold to that so let's continue to hear uh more from pastor miller so i suppressed all of my feelings because i wanted to be a good pastor and my body went into trauma i'm in church i'm crying my eyes out anybody asking what's wrong with you not at all Nobody cares. So you have to go through this. You call people and say, man, I just need to talk. And this is the, this is the advice. Man, you just need to trust God. Bro, y'all don't understand. If I wasn't Holy Ghost filled, I would have cussed a lot of people out. I do trust God. The Bible tells us that you need counsel. And in church, they taught you. No, he doesn't trust God. If he trusted God, he would have stepped down. The counsel was to counsel him. Mister, you need to step down. That should have been the counsel. No wonder he was, you know. Uh, he was experienced whatever he was experiencing, but let's continue. You ain't supposed to go to no counselor. That means you're crazy. No, that means you're smart. I should have went to a therapist. I didn't. I'm talking to y'all as a man that's, that's whole now, but I'm saying this is what I went through. Going through this traumatic experience shut me down where I started to see life through the lens of ministry only and forgot that I'm a human first. So I needed a vacation. I didn't take one. Look at your neighbor and say, you need to go on vacation sometime. You need to go on vacation. Thank you, Jesus. Hold on, y'all. Stay with me. If you sleep, wake up. Look at your neighbor and say, wake up. This is going to get good. I needed prayer. I needed prayer. I needed people to pray for me. Now, watch what happened. When you get to a place where you back yourself into a wall and you feel like nobody cares, let me see if y'all going to be real. You gain an attitude of, well, since y'all don't care, I don't care. And yeah, so everything that he's explaining, it's unfortunate. But all those things, guess what? They would have been avoided. All he could have just done would have just what? I'm stepping down from ministry. And all those things would have been avoided. Step down, go get biblical counseling, heal. I know, like, you know, um, my parents divorced when I was a teenager. It's not easy. Okay? This thing affects you for the rest of your life. It changes uh, things within a family dynamics. It's not good. And that's how you actually see this. God has not designed things to be this way. So it's, it's, it's not good. And what he shared, you know, his wife went on and married somebody else. Who knows? It takes two to tank. Okay. We only know his, uh, his side of his story. We don't know the story of his wife. Why did they divorce? Irreconcilable differences. Uh, did the wife uh, felt uh, neglected by him so busy with the ministry? Is that why they, they divorced? Nobody knows. We don't know. He didn't say. He just said the wife went out and married. That's why it is important the household to be in order. And right now he's sharing this because he's on the other side. Say, I'm a whole now. But the whole time that he was going through whatever else he was going through, he did not share that. So, you know, so that wasn't even good for himself and it wasn't good for the body. We're supposed to bear each other's burden. You know, he should have stepped down to me. And he's still a pastor, so he never stepped down. So he's continuing trying to blame anybody. And one person, he got the, uh, uh, he does minister with whatever, in friends with his who? Jamo Bryant. Okay? And if you know anything about Jamo Bryant, he's also a single out there. I think t uh, twice divorced. Uh, rumors all over the place. Okay? This is also the danger when, uh, when the pastor is single. And he already shared the women are actually going to that church thinking they're going to be the next first lady. You see what I'm saying? So because this is a message that, you know, you know, there are women who actually do those things. Right. But this is also an issue when you have a, a single pastor. Women are going to throw themselves at the pastor. Those, you know, those things are going to happen. Not only that, what happens now if he has a relationship, a girlfriend? And let's just say, okay, the girlfriend, they're planning to marry and this, things don't work out. So now your pastor is, has a second girlfriend because the first one didn't work out. After the divorce, another girlfriend. You see what I'm saying? Is he going to stay single for the rest of his life? I mean, like, it's, it's the, the appearance of it. It's, the wisdom is just not there, to be honest with you. You know, 
I don't think it's a I don't think it's wise for a pastor to be single. It's better to it's better to marry than to you know burn with passion. Okay? I'm not saying that a single a single man cannot be a pastor. I'm just saying wisdom. It's not wise. I think it's good for a pastor to be married because, like you know, there's marriages in uh, in the church. You are an example of what a good marriage looks like. You are an example, uh, you know, what a godly family looks like, right? Because you're leading by example. Everybody's looking at you. So that's why if the pulpit is strong, it's from the pulpit to the pews. When the pulpit is compromised, the pew is also going to be compromised. You cannot change the, the pulpit from the pew. It's the pulpit and then to the pew. We always think like, ah, oh, we can make changes. Like, ah, oh, no. You know, there's a lot of independent churches out here. It's a different story whereby it's just like, you know, like the Baptists, right? It's a congregation. <laughs> they just fire their pastor <laughs> whenever they feel like it, you know? It's not a good thing, you know? That's why you need to have a plurality of elders, and those elders need to be accountable to the members and vice versa. What I'm seeing over here, this guy was given to be a pastor just because his parents were pastors. Because, you know, Jamal Bryant is one of the person you are getting advice from. I'm sorry. <laughs> but let's continue. And then you find yourself, I'm talking to y'all, y'all look like y'all honest. You find yourself doing things outside of your character. Has anybody in this church ever done something and say, that's not even who I am? Put your hand up. You know how you got there? Because you have something suppressed and something that you've been holding on to. And because churches do not allow you to be honest and say, I'm going through something. Then you start acting out in private, but praising God in public. This is, this is heavy, ain't it? I don't have anything to lose. I lost everything. You start acting out. So then you find yourself in compromising situations. Let me tell y'all something. One of the greatest pressures in the world for me is I never wanted to disappoint my mom and dad. I never want, I don't want to let my parents down. And I do love my parents. And I don't want to let them down. But one day you wake up and realize something. When I get to the gates, I cannot say, I didn't want to let my parents down. Listen to me. I made decisions based on you guys. It had nothing to do with me. I said, no, I'm not going to do that because I, I don't want the church to be, I don't want to hurt the church. But when we get to that gate, we ain't going as a group. It ain't going to be, come on, Deacon McCool, we up here together. No, because some of y'all ain't going. I'm like, where Deacon so-and-so at? He's so he's just, you know, he has just confessed so many things. So he has done things for the sake of the church. It sounds good. But you've done those things at the expense of your family. No, that's not how it works. Okay? Your family comes first, then the ministry. Then the ministry. Then the ministry. But he, I guess he felt like, okay, no, but I'm just going to go all in. Okay? I'm going to sacrifice my family. For the sake of the church and everything and look uh, what look what that has done to him what it has landed to him okay he still wants to uh, to be pleasing to his parents which is a good and beautiful thing but if you if you're pleasing your parents at the expense of compromising the word of god then you know you it might look like you're pleasing your parents but it is not the same thing remember jesus when he was talking to the pharisees they'll be like oh no i was going to give this to my parents but i can't because it, it's koban right it's uh, uh, it's for tithe and everything jesus said, no you neglected the important things first, right you are to honor your mom and your you, you are to honor your parents before you're doing all these other things so this guy to me i'm sorry he needs to step down he needs to step down so let's finish up he didn't make it. <laughs> he didn't make it. Like, Pastor Day, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. But I found myself in compromising situations, and this really happened to me. One day I came here, and I laid on this altar right here, and I cried. And I said, Lord, all I wanted to be was an organist. I just wanted to play the organ. You called me to preach. I got married because I wanted to be a man of integrity. I wanted people to look at me and say, that's an example. And I just started crying. And I said, I can't do this anymore. And I had made it up in my mind. This is in 2013. I said, I'm going to resign. I'm going to resign from pastoring. Who is quiet? And I got up that morning. I said, I'm going to call my dad. I'm going to say, dad, I love you. I'm sorry, but I can't do this. I'm going to resign. You and mom are more fit for this. I was worried because I had no jobs. So I'm like, man, I don't know how I'm going to get paid. But... <laughs> See what this drug dealer talk about. 
<laughs> well, you know, yeah, you see, I do think he did, he had an inclination to resign, but he was like, oh, if I resign, I need the money. How am I going to provide for myself? So let me just stick to it. Let me just stay on. And that's exactly what he, uh, he ended up doing all to please his parents. You know, like, you know, yes, you have to be pleasing to your parents. But all in all, to me, no, 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 no. I think if he had stepped down, sought himself out, that would have been, that would have been bait. Okay. So I'm aware some people think that, okay, you know, yes, somebody can be in this situation where like, okay, you were compromised. And after some time, you can come back to the office. I don't know. You know, people think like, oh, no, you know what I mean? You can go outside the ministry then after some time come back some people believe in that i don't believe in that to me if you're disqualified as an elder you're disqualified as an elder there is no coming back you're just going to be a regular member because this is what i think if somebody was uh you know if somebody was caught like you know you're stealing uh the finances of the church or you're robbing you know what i mean you're a robber are you you know yes you know what I mean? You, your sins, you can repent for your sins for sure. You can be forgiven. But are we going to give that person to be a treasure of the of the church? The answer is no. Why not? You see what I'm saying? That's wisdom. The thing we have to remember, right? Like, you know, when we sin, right? Your sin, God is going to forgive your sins. But the consequences of your sin do remain. So as a consequences of the sin is you no longer holding that office. That's what happens. Because these are the qualifications you have failed. That's it. That's just that's just how I see it. If somebody was like, oh, this person was abusing children and everything. You know what? But they repented and everything. Are you going to put them to be in charge of the children's ministry? The answer is no. Why not? You see what I'm saying? Oh, no, but they repented and everything. Yes, they repented. We forgive them. They're still part of this church and everything. But they can save in other areas. Just not the children's ministry. Those are the things that we're going to do. Even in the, in, in, in the public world, whenever you're working, like, okay, this person was caught stealing. Who else is going to give you a job? They're not going to give you a job. Why? Because you're a thief, right? They'll be like, oh, you know, I, I went to jail. I saved my sentence. I paid back and everything else. They'll think, you know what I mean? They're not going to give you a job. Some people will give you a job. But even those situations will be like, oh, no, we don't want you in this situation. Why? Those are the consequences of the things that you have done. Okay, you're living a promiscuous lifestyle. Be like, okay, you know, God is going to forgive you, but you'll be like, okay, because you're living this lifestyle, it ended you, you know, you ended up, you know, catching this particular disease and everything else. And then, you know, uh, it's a terminal illness, things of that nature. That doesn't mean God hasn't forgiven you, but you going through that terminal illness is you living those consequences. So if you are a pastor, these are the qualifications of a pastor. If you fail to, to, to keep up to those standards, you're disqualified. As the consequences of you, you cannot, uh, you know, you, you cannot hold that office again. We're not going to do that with anything else. Why do we leave room for, for, this, um, for this high office of an elder? The biggest important office one can hold. Office taking care of the ship. Uh, the church of Christ himself. You see what I'm saying? So I know there's other people who disagree with that position, but to me, I just don't see it another way. All right, guys, that is all that I had for you guys today. But I'm interested to know what you guys think. Okay? Do you think what I'm saying? You know, do you hold to my position or you have a different view? I'm interested to know, so be sure to leave me a comment. All right, guys, be sure to subscribe. Don't forget to like this video. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Until next time, remember to be in the now. Thank you.